Again, I want to say how much I appreciate everyone allowing the Holy Ghost to move freely. Amen. Hallelujah. This morning, I feel the presence of the Lord in here this evening. Hallelujah. I'm sure y'all felt the presence of the Lord this afternoon. I can tell. I can tell. I said, I can tell. Brother Pete, there's just something about feeling the presence of the Lord, that there's nothing like it in all the world. Nothing is fulfilling as the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Matthew 12 and 42. Hallelujah. Matthew 12 and 42. I believe part of what I'm going to minister tonight, I came across in reading the bread. And if you'll pay attention while you're reading the bread, there'll be some things come into you. There'll be some things blow your mind. No matter how many times you read it, there's something new in it every time. Every time. And and uh, I read a few days ago, some time ago, uh, I, I am a little bit behind, I'm ashamed to say. I've got this bad habit of getting in the New Testament and just forgetting to stop. I've read way further ahead in the New Testament than I have in the Old, and but I am steadily pecking away at it. Amen. I'm just a little bit behind now. Amen. The Queen of the South, that's the Queen of Sheba, shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon Everybody say she came a long way. Now I, I didn't I, I didn't put this in my notes tonight, but as I was studying about where the Queen of Sheba was really from, uh, this really ties in. Sh- she was from the Muslim part of the world. She was from the Arabian part of the world is where she was from. Even some of the, the countries that is listed that was under her reign are some that we hear of right now. But she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater, a greater than Solomon is here. Hallelujah, a greater than Solomon. Jesus is speaking here in Matthew chapter number 12, verse 42. The Pharisees came to him and said, show us a sign. Now, Brother Billy, they were being smart, Alex. If you're really who you say you are, show us a sign. He said, the queen of the south shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Pray with me. Lord, I love you. I thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for every great song that was sung tonight. Thank you for the spirit that we felt while they were singing. I ask you, Lord, to help us to minister tonight. I really believe, God, this could be a make or break service as far as where we go in revival. I'm believing that great things are going to happen as we move forward, as we make a conscious effort to be the people of the name in the name of the Lord Jesus. Clap your hands unto the Lord one more time and you can be seated. Hallelujah. A greater than Solomon is here. Solomon, by definition of Scripture, is the wisest man that ever lived or ever will live. He is the most, at this particular time, the kingdom of Israel is the most affluent kingdom in all the world. Solomon is the most blessed man in all the world. By extension, the land that he rules and the people he is king over are the most blessed nation in the world. These blessings are a result of Solomon desiring the right things. The Lord asked him. Now, this is one of those things I I don't really know the reason why, Brother Rice, but the Lord came to Solomon and said, you ask me what you want that I'll give you. He could have asked for anything, as you well know. But he asked the Lord for wisdom. 
He asked the Lord to be able to know how to go in and how to come out to make the right decision in every situation. He didn't ask for riches. He didn't ask for long life. He didn't ask for influence or affluence, but he asked for wisdom. A great deal of us receiving what we need from God is determined by us having the right desires. Many times we don't receive what we need from God because we're asking for the wrong thing. we got to want the right things. We have got to want what the Lord gives us and not the flesh gives us. If we're led by the flesh, we will never have revival. If you and I are led by the flesh, we will never have revival. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You cannot, if you're led by the flesh, you're being led by the world system. We've got to be led by the spiritual system, what God wants, what God desires. We've got to get the right desires. And I've got to just interject a little bit that's not in my notes, but the psalmist told us how to do that. He said, delight thyself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. You better be careful going to church on Sunday school, going to the nursing home, coming on Sunday night. You go to church too much, and God will bust loose a revival in your life like you've never seen. Because that, my friends, is delighting yourself in the Lord. You go to church more. You listen to more good gospel, Holy Ghost-filled music. You begin to read good Holy Ghost-filled books. You begin to have fellowship with Holy Ghost-filled people. That, my friends, is delighting yourself in the Lord. And when you start delighting yourself in the Lord, He starts placing desire within you. Word has gotten around. People everywhere in all countries and tribes are talking about Solomon. Solomon has a great navy. He has built a beautiful house for the Lord. He has built a beautiful house for himself. He has a large stable, and he is the wisest man the world has ever seen or will ever see. The queen of Sheba has heard these stories, and to be quite frank, she is skeptical. Nobody Nobody can be that blessed. 1 Kings 10 and 1 says, And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. I like the NIV rendering of that verse. It says, When the queen of Sheba heard about the fame of Solomon and his relationship to the Lord, She came to test Solomon with hard questions. Now the Bible tells us, Brother McKinney, that this gal came with camels filled with spices and and gold and precious stones, and she brought many gifts to Solomon. But the most important thing that we need to notice that she brought to Solomon is she came with all kinds of questions. Her questions, no doubt, were conceived in her mind when she began to hear of Solomon's wisdom and prosperity. And we cannot help but draw if you, if you follow the line of thinking of the day. And, and one commentary I read suggests uh, that if she, finds the, if she finds that the stories of Solomon are true, if she finds that what she's been hearing is true, she's brought a bunch of stuff with her brother Pete uh, because if it's that good, she wants to be a part of it. The greatest, the greatest evangelism tool we can use, Sister Eloise, is have awesome church. We can get a sign, we can get a billboard, we can have an evangelist come in. But Brother Terry, the greatest thing we can do is have awesome church. Is have people filled with the Holy Ghost every service. Is have wine O's and weird O's come in and be delivered every service. We have got to make up in our mind that we're going to let the Holy Ghost move every time we come in here. Because it ain't just about the service. It's not just about the service you're in. But it's what people are going to be talking about when they leave out the doors of this house. And there will be people come just because they want to find out if it's true or not. And when she had seen all of Solomon's wisdom, the house he has built, 
the meat of his table, the setting of his servants, or the fact that all of his servants have a place, the attendance of his ministers, the clothes that they wore, his cup bearers. He ascended unto the temple to offer burnt offerings to the Lord. When she saw all of these things, Brother Pete, then the Bible said that spirit was gone from her. The spirit of doubt, the spirit of skepticism was gone. Her response was, it was true. It was true. What I had heard of you in my own land was true. I did not believe it, she said, until I saw it for myself. We preach wisdom, Brother Doyle, not the wisdom of this world, but the wisdom of God, which is foolishness to the world. The wisdom that we preach is uh, that your way up is down, that in order to live, uh, you must die. We also have a house, a holy house, built up for a habitation of God, of the Spirit of God. What know ye not that your body, that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, and you are not your own. You don't belong to yourself. There's a rumor that ought to be going around the city of New Madrid and the surrounding areas. Have you heard what's happening over there? They should be talking about us uptown. They should be talking about us in the coffee shop. They should be talking about about us at their supper table. They should be talking about us in the newspaper. They should be talking about us uh, not because we're seeking for glory, but because we're glorifying God. Therefore, glorify God in your spirit and in your body, which belong to him. Brother Rice, as quick as I figure out, I don't belong to me. That's when I have revival. I told somebody today, the church of 2013 is waiting for a big blanket to fall down and just give everybody a spirit of revival. It ain't coming that way, Brother Billy. It's going to come when I get it myself, when I root it out, and when I seek for it, and when I study, and when I seek the face of God, and when I fast and deny my flesh, then I'm going to have revival. Here at this church, everybody has a place. Everybody has a ministry. Everybody has on a garment of praise. I'm telling you what they ought to be saying about us. Everybody has a cup to bear. And everybody has a soul to be filled. And everybody in that place worships the Lord, worships the Lord with everything that's within them. And offers up a sacrifice of praise to God continually. If we operate, you hear me right now. If we operate in the manner that God destined us to as the church that's built on the rock, the Holy Ghost will minister and speak for itself. It will speak through us, Brother Terry. It will operate through us. The Holy Ghost will speak for itself. It speaks through those that he has filled, that's filled. But here we go. Here's where I want to preach to you. And let me say this up front. To our guest, I apologize for what I'm about to say. Do not get angry with me. Do not get angry with me with what I'm about to say. Because the Holy Ghost has spoke this into my life. The Holy Ghost has spoke this. I've had to be reminded of it several times throughout this service, Brother Pete. The Holy Ghost has spoke this into my life. But here's something that jumped out at the Queen of Sheba. As she walked around checking all Solomon's stuff out. As she walked around listening to everything Solomon had to say. As she watched what was taking place in Solomon's house, as she was checking out everything that was happening, Brother McKinney, because she wanted to know if it's for real or not. Here's what she saw. All the 
the things I've listed to you already? She said. But the thing that jumped out at the queen was that everybody that she came in contact with that were under the authority of Solomon, everybody she saw in Solomon's house was happy. Being a servant of Solomon made them happy. Being in Solomon's kingdom made them happy. Getting to be blessed with the wisdom of Solomon every day made them happy. The people of God ought to be happy. Not just on the outside, but on the inside. There is a ministry, you hear me right now, there is a ministry for happy people. Say, I can't sing. No, you may not can sing. Join the crowd. I may not can preach. I may not can teach. I may not can shout. I can't dance worth a flip. But I'll tell you what, there is a ministry for happy people. The world is unhappy. The world is miserable. And when they walk into this place, they don't want to see unhappy and miserable people, but they want to see smiles. They want to see eyes wide open. They want to see happy people. Happy are thy men. Happy are your servants. They're happy. Be happy in Jesus. Why should I be happy in Jesus? Because the power of the Holy Ghost has taken up residence in my spirit. Because of the knowledge that I have of who he is. The revelation of who Jesus is, or more importantly, of who I am to him, should speak through us always. The revelation of who he is and the revelation of who I am to him should speak through us always, especially when we come to the house of God. Happy. Everybody say happy. Everybody she saw was happy. Let's look at Paul in the 26th chapter of Acts. Paul is a prisoner. Paul is bound. Whether he's speaking of a chain of shackles or simply his imprisonment, Paul is bound. He is afflicted. He is hampered. He is hindered physically. Falsely accused. Hear me right now. Falsely accused. Lied on. Rejected by his own people. Forsaken by some of his followers. But I want you to notice what happens in that state. Brother Shannon, he ain't delivered. I want you to notice what happens when in that position... He gets an opportunity to be a witness for Jesus. 26 and 1 says, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted. To speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth his hand. Brother Terry, he's bound. Everybody say he's bound. He's going to testify just in a few minutes that I wish everybody here was like me except for these bonds. That's what he's going to say in a few minutes. He is bound up, Sister Sharon. But he's got an opportunity, Brother Rice. 
in the middle of having a headache, in the middle of having a bellyache, in the middle of having a bad no, prognosis from the doctor, in the middle of having problems all around them, in the middle of the bank account being a little bit low, in the middle of you name it. And Agrippa says, you can speak for yourself. And Paul stretched forth his hand, give me verse 2, and said, I think myself happy. No, Paul, you can't be happy, brother. You can't be happy. Oh, there's a calling that's higher than me getting out of where I'm at. He said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. He didn't say you receive power to shake off the chains. He didn't say you receive power to speak groceries onto your table. He said you receive power to be a witness unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the earth. How many in here beside me have a little bit of a problem being chicken when it comes to witnessing. Just keep that in your mind. First off, let me tell you something. The more you pray, the less chicken you'll be. Especially the more you pray with that in mind. I've told you all before how I'd get out of the car and I'd pray all the way up the door nobody would be home. And then knock. Listen. I have. Check the door, the screen door, real gently. It's locked. The only thing is, Brother McKinney, that's all cute and I can hide behind it, but that's not acceptable. <laughs> Brother McKinney, I'm commanded to be a witness. Commanded to be a witness. I have received the Holy Ghost so that I might be a witness. His first proclamation is I think myself happy. I can speak for myself. His declaration is not of one. What can I do to talk you into turning me loose? But the Bible said Paul began to testify. He said, I was on a road to Damascus. And Jesus shined his light down on me. And I was blind for a few days. But when the preacher told me what to do, I did it, and I can see. I was given a calling that everywhere and to everybody, I am to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ. I think myself happy when I think of where I used to be, when I think of where he brought me to and where he's brought me from. When I look around and see what the Lord is doing among us, it makes me happy. And I think myself happy in whatever predicament I'm in that I got an opportunity to let the world know what my Savior has done for me. That's why I shout. That's why I run. That's why I leap. It's because of what the Lord has done for me. Happy. I'm happy. Somewhere along the line, somebody sold especially our young people, a bill of goods. you got to live for God, but you can't be happy doing it. Oh, Lord, that's such a lie. Oh, that's such a lie. Oh, that's such a lie. Well, I want you to know something. I'm not talking about putting on a good show. I'm talking about a true revelation of who Jesus is. I'm talking about standing on his promises that are in him, yea, and in him, amen. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So wherever you are right now, you're just there temporary.
I said, you're just there temporary. I said, well, I've been here a long time. Hold on. Hold on. Because it may not happen here. Oh, but when the trumpet sounds, when the trumpet sounds, he said, he'll never leave me nor forsake me. He said, I won't leave you comfortless. He said, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Isaiah declared no weapon. No weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. Now you hear me right now. I want you to please hear me right this minute. If you've repented of your sins, if you've been baptized in the name of Jesus, and if you have been filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, we have an obligation to be happy. Say, who am I obligated to to be happy? The queen wasn't just looking and listening to Solomon. She was looking and listening to the people that served him. Their words and actions spoke to her. A message that was received that said, I'm only too happy to be able to be with Solomon. I need to remind you what Jesus said to the Pharisees and a greater then Solomon is here. Remember when the queen of Sheba responded to Solomon? She said, it was true. The part I heard was true. I did not believe it until I came to see it for myself. Now I can say that those that have just talked about it couldn't tell the half of it. Your wisdom and prosperity exceeded the fame which I had heard. We need to have the kind of church that people leave here with their eyes bugged out. That people all over town are talking about our spirit, talking about our music, and talking about the love that they feel. But our first and most powerful witness is that we are happy. Happiness is what people are looking for. They don't want an answer that they're going to hate. Nobody says, give me that medicine that makes me sick. Give me that medicine that's nasty. Nobody says, take something away from me so I'll be better. Nobody says, deprive me so I'll be better. The world, even our own government, our own constitution speaks of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I come to tell you that not only do we have life, not only do we have liberty, but we have a happiness. Brother Pete, the world is hopeless. My goodness gracious. Everybody wants to be happy. I know Facebook's of the devil. I know it is. But I read on there where one day some old gals found the love of her life and thanking the Lord for it. And the next day, cussing and swearing because all men are no good. Oh, that's all comical. The thing is that they're just being honest. It ain't a man and it ain't things. It's just whatever will make me happy. And they come here. Brother Pete, they, if what we're selling is all that great, then how come we're not happy? No. We flunk mind reading. We don't know how much you pray at home. We don't know how much you sing and rejoice at home. All we know is that when the Holy Ghost moves, And you know what? 
I would encourage you, if you don't really feel happy, I'd encourage you to think yourself happy. <laughs> when I think of the goodness of Jesus, I told you don't get mad at me. I'm preaching about the Holy Ghost. But here's the crazy thing, Brother Marcus, is that when people sit back because they think that they're thumbing their nose at me, it ain't got nothing to do with me. It's about him. And there ain't no devil in hell or there ain't no carcass that's ever been born on the face of planet earth that can steal away from me what he's done for me. Brother McKinney, she saw happy people. And Jesus said, a greater than Solomon is here. You say, well, happiness is something that's cultivated in your prayer closet. Happiness is something that has grown in fasting, prayer, Bible reading, and fellowship. And true happiness manifests itself in evangelism. This happiness is not predicated on how I might feel in my body. It's not predicated about how somebody else might feel about me. It is totally built upon the fact that I get to be with Jesus and I get to be with him all the time. You come to the music. People would come and visit because of what they've heard. They'll be interested in what they feel. But they're going to be more interested in what it's done for us. My face needs to show it. Come on, let me get a few more amens. I, my face needs to show what the Lord has done for me. Say, well, I don't feel good. Join the crowd. Join the crowd. Let's stand. First Peter chapter 4. Did you get my other text? First Peter chapter 4. Beloved. Learn this right now. When he says beloved, he's talking to the church. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. Think it not strange, as though some strange thing had happened unto you. But rejoice. Oh, I can't do that. You don't know what you can do when you get full of the Holy Ghost. Brother Pete, I read where two preachers get thrown in jail, beat till their backs are bleeding, thrown in the inner prison with the bad guys, and at midnight, they're singing and praying to God. Somebody tell me what's different between them and us. If they can rejoice in a jailhouse, we should sure enough be able to rejoice in the church house. But rejoice inasmuch as you have partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Give me that next verse. If ye re be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory because the spirit of the glory and the spirit of God resteth upon me. On their part, that's the world, he is evil spoken of, but on my part,
But on my part, he Therefore, glorify God in your spirit. And what's the next part say? And in your body. But on your part, he is glorified. Let's stop glorifying our ailments and glorifying our problems and glorifying what all is going wrong in our life. Let's just glorify God. Let's just glorify God. Well, you know what? We got problems. He said, in the world, you'll have tribulation. It's going to happen. But he said, be, everybody say, be of good cheer.